Hi everyone, it is October 17, 2018. I want to thank my subscribers for sending me along the information on Central Texas flooding. Well, all I can say is that the agendas are continuing to accelerate every day and once again, I'm going to say it, as everybody is waiting for those arrests of Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton as they start a national tour doing speaking engagements, more and more Americans are getting destroyed, either by flooding or by disease or by frequencies and I'm going to be posting a video something happened today with me that was absolutely frequency related and I'm still I can't tell you how many times I get knocked out now where I can't do a thing I feel very strangely sick well here we go lift from the dry scorching summer heat as KXA and Steffi Lee shows us we could be in for a long stretch of wetter conditions tiny ice crystals fell outside the National Weather Service's Amarillo office Sunday after parts of Texas flooded last week, Central Texas is slated to have more rain this week. A lot of the dry conditions that we were seeing are, are, are finally gone for now. That's confirmed by the latest drought monitor map, and the wet weather could keep coming. Meteorologists say this could be a year with above average rainfall, similar to what the state saw in 2015. Some of our snowiest years were, were El Nino years. Um, it's all going to come down to how strong it ends up getting. It's not a very strong event right now. We live in Texas, and we need to be prepared for the fact that the weather is going to do this. It's still hard to predict. If it quits raining, mm. then we'll, you know, kind of be heading back the other direction. So we need it to be consistent. Hopefully, El Nino will help out on that. Which is what All right, you know, this is really hard. It's very hard, and I'm very grateful to those subscribers who leave comments or have emailed me telling me how hard it is for them as well. Texas Modification Association. I have posted many videos showing that Texas in particular is the state that has been modifying the weather for decades. Decades. I've posted videos with Mr. Texas Modification. He being interviewed saying that they can create more rain over a larger period of over a larger area over a longer period of time and Texans still refuse to accept that the weather is being modified this is such a unbelievably mad world that we are living. Mad and violent. Well, yeah. Above average rainfall? I'd say so. More heavy rain in central Texas this morning could bring a new round of violent flooding. Nearly a foot of rain in the past week has left houses underwater with rivers and lakes rising to near historic levels. At least one person has died. Texas governor declared disasters in 18 counties. Mark Straussman is in Llano, Texas, that's northwest of Austin, where people are still in danger today. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning. I want to show you something. This is the churning Llano River behind me, which in some spots rose 35 feet in 24 hours after heavy rains. Wow. People oh, my God. Well, the death toll is rising. The last I saw was two. But, you know, you Google this or whatever search engine. Texas flooding causes bridge collapse, evacuation, central Texas flooding, 
kills at least one. No, it's now two. Catastrophic flooding in Texas causes evacuation, bridge destruction. Ah, Texas flooding leaves two people dead. More rain on the way. Damage starts to show. Here's the bridge watching way. There it is. The bridge is in the water right there. There it is. There's the bridge. Whoa. There's the bridge going down the river. There's the bridge going down the river. Yeah, at this point, uh, what we know is that all of the floodgates here on the Max Starkey Dam are open. And I'm going to go, go ahead and take a step out of the way and just show you uh, this picture right away. You can see the incredible amount of water that is pouring out of the lake and headed down the river at this point. Ten different floodgates, all of them open. And there's so much power down there. You can see the water churning, throwing up all of that mist. Now, I was up here uh, the last time time we saw some flooding on the Lano River just last week and uh, this is a spot where a lot of locals are coming to get a look at this themselves. They're coming up and taking pictures. We haven't seen anyone this morning but as these floodgates open this is certainly something that uh, is uh, rare enough that people want to come and see it when it does happen especially having all 10 of them open at once. Now this is not the only dam. So, uh, it, what it appears to me is that virtually every dam has been, their floodgates have been opened. But as those who live in the area are coming to take pictures, a man almost lost his life. And this, that dam that we just saw, well, he went over that dam. I heard, help, help me, and it was real faint. It's like, did I just hear that? They sure did. It was a cry for help coming from the flood water. At first, Jay Diamond and Mike Zembic couldn't see where it was coming from. There was so much debris and things, you couldn't tell one thing from another. Another person with them spotted the man. He was he was out about where that, that's our dock that was over here, and now it's just out there. But it was about that far away. I don't know, we just reacted, and we just took off. Luckily for the man fighting to stay afloat, the current pushed him closer to the shore, close enough so neighbors could throw him a life preserver. Uh, he's pretty shook up. But, I mean, he was able to walk, and he's pretty coherent. The man told them. Uh, he was trying to secure his boat and two jet skis. He's trying to start the boat. The next thing you know, he said everything, he just went over, or, or went over the dam. And uh, he said he went under about five or six times. He said he took a bunch of water, and he said I was about ready to give up. I said, I'm glad you didn't. With some help, the man got to call his wife. And he told her that uh, he was okay, and uh, like I said, it was, it was emotional. Whatever they could to clear out a thick layer of mud left behind by the flooding. David Schaffman can point out just how high the water got. It came all the way up, so it was up, you know, a foot over me, so seven, eight feet up the house. Friends are now helping move out many of his family's mud-coated belongings. Water destroyed his children's bedroom on the first floor and swept away his boat and two jet skis. I found a jet ski over in the tree over there, but it's not mine, so <laughs> I'll keep looking. Flood victims will soon receive even more help from the First United Methodist Church in Marble Falls. The church gym is acting as a collection point for donations of bottled water and cleaning supplies. It's what the Bible tells us to reach out to those who are in need, and so that's what we are, the hands and feet of Christ. Here in Johnson Park in Marble Falls, the extreme flooding caused another issue. Just across the creek here, you can see that a home and another building are hanging off a drop-off that wasn't even there until yesterday. Ooh. 
The extensive damage at his own home makes David Schaffman question if it's worth rebuilding. Before we do anything, I think we're going to have to rethink the whole program. So we'll see. Will Dupree, KXAN News. Berna County. Whether you have the hands and feet of Christ or you simply have compassionate, good uh, hands and feet, there are, there are a lot of people who need help. A lot of people who need help. Me, it needs volunteers to help with cleanup there. If you want to help, show up to the Marble Falls Baptist Church on La Ventana. This is also the same place that you can go if you need help yourself. And right now, Marble Falls is just one of several cities under a boil water notice. People in Llano and Kingsland are also asked to boil water used for drinking, cooking, brushing teeth, washing hands and faces. It's not clear when the boil water notice will be lifted for these cities. In Kingsland, authorities say that you can go to the community center if you need bottled water. And in Llano, drinking water is available at the junior high school. Water. Well. Can we not do anything different? Can we not think of anything to do differently? That, uh, have a significant amount of water surrounding them, and the water is slowly but surely rising. Now, uh, the Travis County Sheriff's deputies who we've been talking to this morning, they just left. They're done with their shift out here. They tell us that the Lake Patrol will be out here shortly, but they say they've done their job. They've been out here for close to 24 hours now telling people who live in these neighborhoods that if they want to get out, now is the time. There are some people who are staying here. And that, of course, is their decision. This is only a voluntary evacuation here. So there's nothing that the sheriff's deputies can do to make people leave. But this situation is changing very quickly this morning. The deputies that I talked to told me that since they've been out here last night, this water has all come in. These homes were not surrounded when they got here last night. And I want to show you, I'm kind of using these trash cans over here as my personal gauge. When we got out here about 45 minutes ago, the water line was right at the far edge of the green trash can here. So you can see that even since we've been here, this water is coming up toward us. And it's to the point that these deputies suggested to us that we turn our news cars around facing out of the neighborhood just in case we need to get out we can do so quickly. Now, fortunately, we're parked up on the road and it is quite a bit higher than uh, the water line is right now. So we are. So that's as, that's how fast the waters are rising. Cookie Haseman is packing up her house while making her way through the pool of Lake Marble Falls that's intruded. First thing I did was get both of them and little things at a time books. Big things are heading out too. The TV, dressers, all while keeping a close eye on the uncomfortable view out her living room. Across town, first responders use military grade vehicles to bring supplies to the Meadow Lakes and Pecan Valley communities. Both are cut off and surrounded by water. We're transporting uh, materials for them, uh, food and and water. Jim McCollin is among those unable to return home. Right now, I don't know where I'm going to spend the night. City leaders tell me anywhere between 75 and 85 homes are flooded here in Marble Falls. That includes this home behind me and parts of this neighborhood. Home after home is in similar shape. And this one belongs to uh, John Fry. We didn't grab anything really important. We didn't we didn't think it was that important because I didn't really think it was coming up this high. Wildlife is also impacted. A skunk stranded and this deer struggling to walk after appearing to take a rest in the water. And then this is the main room. Haseman isn't sure where she'll be staying tonight, but knows when she returns, her home won't be the same. It still hadn't hit me. I still think I'm going to walk, you know, go take a hot shower tonight and go to bed, but I'm not going to. 
There are multiple evacuation shelters set up here tonight, including at the Meadow Lake City Hall. That is specifically for those people stranded, along with the First Baptist Church of Marble Falls and the Burnett Community Center. I am told that people are using those and that they plan to stay the night there. Back to you. More floodgates open at another dam. Toward the Lake Travis area, and some of the water is passing through Austin. Texas Burning Glass is at Tom Miller Dam, where one floodgate is open now. It's been a bit of an attraction. A number of Austinites have come out to both the Tom Miller and Mansfield dams to see the floodgates open. Now, the LCRA has been opening those floodgates at both the Tom Miller Dam and the Mansfield Dam since noon today and every two hours since then. So noon to four o'clock this afternoon and then we expect that at six o'clock tonight that will be the last of the openings of the floodgates however we are of course waiting to learn the latest information from the lcra reporting at the tom miller dam for eat glass hey now the people who are coming out to take pictures and film of water coming through a dam do you think they will come back and help the people or help people in this area that need it. It was in a neighborhood here in Marble Falls. Uh, people were evacuating, and at the same time, a deer was actually trying to get out of the water, swimming through the flood water there. Animals are also trying to get to higher ground at this point, too. We also saw lots of debris floating away and down this very, very strong Colorado River earlier today. There was everything from boats to large trees. Even a shed at one point was floating down the river. So a lot of people have come by to watch that, to see this flooding, because some of them have said they've never seen anything like this. One man stopped by um, our live shot location just before we came on to air. He said he's been in this area since 1982 and has never seen the river look like this. Guys. Sorry for the phone ringing. You know, guys, it's really it well. very hard, you know, to, to deal with this. Um, you know, it's like just the sense of helplessness is uh, pretty intense. Look at all of these dams. Buchanan has been opened, uh, like marble uh, or should I say the Starkey Dam, Mansfield Dam, Tom Miller Dam. I don't know about the Inks and the Wirtz Dam yet. Who is south of Kingsland in Burnett County where residents there, actually homeowners along the river, found a body that washed ashore on the Colorado River. Lauren, what is the latest there? Yeah, we're still working to gather information, but right now we did just get some new information. This comes from the Kimball County Emergency Coordinator, who uh, is actually in junction. He tells us that they are still searching for a woman who was swept away by the flood last week and that they have now notified the family of that missing woman, saying that this could be her. Now they're just waiting to positively identify that woman. A little further downstream from here, families are grabbing their belongings and evacuating as they watch the water inch closer and closer to their homes. On Lake Marble Falls, where the water is generally nice and calm, it is raging. The water is tearing down fences, slamming large debris into homes, and sweeping away so much of what these homeowners have worked for. Every lakefront home across this whole lake uh, is at least four or five feet underwater. It's blowing the doors out, knocking the fences down. I mean, all their personal possessions are washing out into the water. Boats are going by, swept, you know, away by the current, upside down, inverted. Uh, I just hope nobody has animals or anything like that left. And the water is continuing to rise this afternoon. Earlier this afternoon, I saw a car. The water was up to the bottom of its door. Within just an hour and a half, the water was completely over the top of the car. Everybody that I've talked to said that this is something that they have never seen before, and they'd be more than happy if they never saw it again. Never saw it before. Never seen anything like it. Buchanan Dam.
how much flooding is being caused by these dam releases? How many animals are trying to escape these these floodwaters? My God, we are being hit every which way now. School bus, hope no children were on that school bus. The driver of the bus was placed under arrest. I don't know why the driver was placed under arrest. Maybe because he was driving in floodwaters. Travis has a 30 foot buffer specifically to hold flood water as it rushes downstream. So far, 16 feet of that is already being used. By Friday, those 30 extra feet could be down to just two. KVU's Kaylin Norwood is live at Mansfield Dam tonight where a cruise could open a record number of floodgates. Kaylin? Oh, Mike, that's right. I'm here at the top of Mansfield Dam along with several others who are keeping an eye on these floodgates. Right now, there are four floodgates that are open, but within the next 24 hours, that could change. LCRA is planning to open an additional four floodgates by tomorrow afternoon, so that would make this whole eight floodgates that would be open, and that's going to be the first in Mansfield Dam history. So looking down, I just want to get some perspective here. Just imagine what eight floodgates being open would look like, because this is four right now, and you can just see the sheer intensity of the water that is coming out. It's coming out with real force, and you see the rapid waters as well. So this all means that more water will be flowing into the heart of Austin. I'm talking about Lake Austin, Lady Bird Lake, and down the Colorado River. LCRA is saying you can expect to see higher water levels at that point, and if you live in those areas, it's best to be prepared. They're asking people to take precautions and to plan for potentially rising waters. Again, this is all because of what is happening right here. To give you some context, uh, there were five gates that were open back in 1991, and then six gates that are open in 1957 and so now tomorrow by tomorrow afternoon they're planning to open a total of eight gates and this will be the first in Mansfield Dam history. And you notice how it's not raining right now so what why are they opening up all of these floodgates because they got torrential rainfall in these lakes and rivers. Wow. Well, if you want more information, you can come over here to KVUE. <clears throat> Texas flooding continues while damage starts to show. Hmm. Central Texas flooding will likely impact future FEMA flood maps. Oh, everybody is going to be in a flood zone. Everybody will have to purchase flood insurance. FEMA flood insurance. What a great way to get more and more money. Look guys, uh, this is not a joke. <laughs> this is very real this war that we are in. And they are using the weapons now. Well, I want to say no holds bar, but I think we're going to come upon a time where it's going to be no holds bar. A lot of this is to get people believing in climate change and global warming and it's Agenda 2030 and it's pushing 
it's pushing Americans, more and more Americans, to the brink. You know, when I think about Trump and I think about all of those headlines, how fabulous the economy is doing, manufacturing coming back to America. Do you have any idea the millions just this year, just this year, from January to the current day, date, how many millions have had their homes destroyed? We really, really, really need to reach out now. This war is not going to stop. We do not have the manpower to fight against this, the condition of the American people, and a lot are within the awake crowd. There is no way that they could fight anything. So this is just going to continue. And as I have shown you, video after video after video after video for six years, you can see that this is accelerating rapidly. And do not think that you're immune. No matter where you live, just because you happen to live in an area and it's your house is not in a floodplain, do not think it can't get flooded. And as you see, more and more Americans get affected by this. Start thinking about what you're going to do. If you get affected or when you get affected. And I'm sorry for the sloppy videos that I'm posting. Um, I just, I, I have to. But as I have said, there is a lot of us who post who have also been affected and are getting affected. And eventually we won't be around. So I really hope that some of you really start considering uh, posting, uh, trying to get the word out, even if you just start channels and you copy other people's videos and you post them on your channel and keep trying to get it through to people that are in your real life that geoengineering and weather modification has been going on for decades and this is the consequence this is not climate change or global warming this is weather modification this is geoengineering this is war <laughs>